What's up, bros and hoes? Whatever floats your goat, it's your boy Relentless, and today I'm bringing you yet another Division build video. I hope everyone is enjoying their Friday. I uh, hope you're having an awesome and, fastic and fantastic time going on into the weekend. I hope your weekend is great. As you all know, I've been grinding on Rainbow Six Siege, and I'm thoroughly addicted, but have no fear. Uh, I, my loyalty is still lies also uh, with the division as I bring other diversity into my channel as far as not just being uh, a one game uh, type channel. So I'm trying a multi facet uh, games to bring you the most content possible. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to Revolution Gaming, uh, best gaming community that there is on all things gaming. No matter what the game may be, check out their link in the description below. And also a shout out to Cinch Gaming Controllers. Uh, make great awesome controllers. They're ten times better than Control Freaks. And their durability is hands down the best in the industry. And you can use code Cinch4206 and receive 5% off. But moving on to this build. Um, this build, whether it be in Last Stand, PvP, or PvE... Um, there's multiple different ways you can mix and match things that, in my opinion, makes it the ultimate build to strive for uh, in getting your hands on in the division. I know some prefer others such as Deadeye, Striker, uh, Predator, Banshee, whatever. But when it comes to raw base damage and the things that you can uh, add to this build, as such as other gear set pieces, this what makes this build the best build in 1.6 currently. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. And as you can see, we'll start with the weapons first. Uh, SASG 99.3K. Running brutal, responsive, and competent. In the magazine, I'm running 111% magazine size, 2.5% crit hit chance, and 4.7% rate of fire. In my small optics, 24.5%. Optimal range, 3% create chance, and 4% create damage. And in the small underbarrel, I'm rocking 49.5% optimal range, 2% uh, accuracy, and 4% critical hit damage. Now, we all know the SHG is boss in the DZ when it comes to staggering opponents. And when you stack on optimal range, as you can see, I'm well over 70% optimal range, which makes my optimal range so much more than just a regular SMG without... Um, with the optimal range being uh, equipped to it. So that's what makes this SASG so much more potent. And with competent in my third slot, that just increases my damage uh, every time I pop a skill. And I'm almost uh, at 100k damage on that. But you can supplement different things if you want to increase your base damage. Uh, moving on to the sleeper gun. A lot of people sleep on the classic AK. Uh, as you can see, the base damage is 24.2%. And I'm running deadly, destructive, and adept. Uh, instead of the Adept, um, once I get more funds, I plan on re-rolling that to something else uh, that'll better benefit this. But as it currently sits, uh, Adept using a seal increases its crit hit chance. So it alone has its place, has its uh, there if I want to extend my crit chance with an AR. But you can also go with a Hungry Hog. As you can see here, I have one with Destructive, Unforgiving, and Glutton. Uh, 24, 20 point K base damage. Also, I have a MP5 ST with responsive, deadly, and vicious if I choose to go all crit build on someone. Or I can switch over to the con with deadly, destructive, and the con on it at 20.7. So the sky is the limit when it comes to running what you will uh, and what you want to on this build. But without, let's go on into the character sheet. Or should I say my main stats. And as you can see... Um, if I happen to switch to the MP5, uh, 320k uh, DPS, and then my sausage is at 242. This is to go to create the stagger, and this is just to crit them for all that they're worth. But let's jump into the gear. Uh, keep in mind, you can mix and match these gear pieces uh, to better suit your play style and playability, however you want to play. And... Um, the toughness on this would go up if you spec more into stamina or you had better base armor rolls on your gear. Um, I do have a vigorous chest piece at 2001 that would make this uh, a little more tanky of a build. Um, but it's all how you want to spec into it. And with my skill power the way it is, and I have spec'd into skill haste as much as possible. 
So therefore, I get my skills back a lot better and a lot faster, and my survivability is that much higher due to the simple fact of my skill power and skill haste and my skills coming back really, really quick. Um, I have found, uh, while running the Dark Zone, and this is a debatable subject, uh, some people will say, well, your toughness is a little on the low side, but yet if you know how to move and you know how to utilize your cover and you have skill haste stacked and uh, a good amount of skill power, then that just furthers your survivability no matter what your toughness is. Uh, me and Reggie Merck White, check out his channel below, um, we're running the DZ with 290k toughness, but around 170k skill power, and the rest of it specced into firearms, and we were just slaying people, and we were just a two-man group slaying four-man groups. So it's all in your play style and how to utilize your build to meet its potential. But let's move on into it. As you can see here, I'm running a rapid chest piece, decreased cooldown for healing skills by 15%. Now, it's got 1128 electronics on it. I wish it was a little bit higher. But if I chose to want to even be more DPS, and as you can see, uh, my skill power actually dropped by 20k, but yet my toughness would go up significantly. Well, not my toughness, my DPS and firearms would go up significantly. I can also switch to this rapid chest piece. But as you can see, both chest pieces, both are rapid, uh, depending on the situation, whether I want to be on firearms or be on electronics. The, truth, uh, the choice is yours, either or, but they are both specced into skill haste and health. It's just this one has a lower base armor roll. And then my minor attributes, I always prefer uh, ammo capacity on my chest piece and backpack. And then in the mod slots, I have 259 firearms, 3% skill haste, and 259 stamina with 3% skill haste. Now, the Tenacious Mask has moved into a more of an offensive weapon, and since they did give medkits a little bit more buff now, then you get a little bit more out of your health, especially if you put it in your first aid self heals on your mods. I have a great armor roll on this at 1,000, um, but also if my stamina roll was a little bit tougher on this, uh, and at least 1250 more, that would give me a little bit more in toughness, and then I opted in for skill power. Um, and instead of disorient resistance, you want to shoot for bleed resistance or bird resistance, in this situation but this is the best one I had so this is when I went for it and we all know the talent for tenacious increased damage by 10% for 10 seconds when using a med kit so if you're rocking booster shot you know med kit with tenacious um, and then as you saw I have competent on my SASG and you can just stack damage on top of damage on damage and then you're just gonna wreak havoc in the DZ and then in my mod slot, 263 electronics and 3% skill haste. Now, if you don't want as much skill power and want to drop it down ever so much, um, you can opt in to switch out these electronic mods with skill haste and put in stamina skill mods with skill haste um, if you want to be even more tanky. I leave that up to your discretion. Also, moving on to the championship knee pads for those grenaders out there that comes in real nice and handy. Um, I went, I had to re-roll this main stat. It had a really low, real low main stat, and now the main stat on it is 1258 in stamina. Uh, major attributes, crit hit damage. Um, you can substitute crit hit damage for numerous things, whatever bits, uh, fits your build the best. Um, you can opt in for even more health uh, and bring it up to around 135k toughness if you prefer uh, and as I get a better short bow pair of knee pads then that's what I would do I would switch off major attributes of the 8% crit hit dance and stack on another 15k in health and in my minors bleed resistance damage resistance damage to elites uh, blind death resistance uh, instead of damage to elites even though it does play a role in the PBE side I'd rather have uh, burn resistance and shock resistance. Those are the three that I think is most crucial, especially if you're uh, doing last stand or roaming the dark zone, then you would want bleed resistance, burn resistance, and shock resistance in those minor attributes. And as going into my stem, uh, my mods, I have 248 stamina, 3% skill haste, um, still trying to grind the RNG and, and roll better stamina mods, and this is the best one I got so far. Um, I'd like it to be at least 260 or above, so that alone would also increase my toughness a little bit with 
min max uh, mods if possible. And I'm pretty sure you fellas out there have come across more. So if you want to spec into more stamina, by all means, this build completely in its entirety is not min maxed. But I've run it in last stand and completely melt. Uh, I believe I got a 24 uh, kill streak, which is, you know, there's better ones out there. But I don't really play last stand that much because I find it uh, as PvP with training wheels. So I'd rather do my PvPing in the dark zone. And then I have a 5% first aid self heal. Moving on to the backpack. I have specialized backpack, roll the firearms. Um, decent overall base armor roll. Uh, the firearms was uh, 1258. And I have opted in for the additional health. And then the minor attributes, bleed resistance, which always comes in handy when facing uh, Predator's Mark. Or if you get hit by uh, Seeker Mines or anything like that, which causes the bleed, this will help out. But you can opt in for other things. If you so choose, uh, see, I have a specialized backpack with stamina. Um, that would make me even tougher. I could easily switch to that if I so choose. But then, you know, my firearms would be still adequate. But I prefer the extra firearms that I already have on there. Um, and see, I have even a better specialized backpack if I chose to go that way. But, you know, the armor base value did come in uh, to play a part at 1224. And the one I have on is 1308. And then my mod slots, once I get to them on my one track mind, I have skill haste uh, and electronics rolled onto this with 6% uh, first aid self heal and another 6% first aid self heal. Moving on to the gloves, of course, it's the Skull MC gloves. And um, we all know the talents, damage is increased by 16% when no set bonuses are active. So if you think about the tenacious that you're running, uh, the the booster shot that you're running, and being able to stack all that damage on there. So just popping a med kit accompanied with the Skull MC gloves, that's 26% damage. And then also by using a skill uh, such as your booster, booster shot, you're activating competent on your Savage gloves. And that's just, you know, 36% bonus damage going into your SASG and pretty much they're not going to be able to shoot you because of the stagger that is on the SASG which makes it great. Um, but I've opted in for the SMG damage, crit hit chance and crit hit damage but if you specifically want to run an SASG and make that your primary then instead of SMG damage you would want shotgun damage in this spot. If you're running ARs with this build and prefer an AR then you want assault rifle damage and LMG, you want LMG damage, you get the point, but then you want crit hit chance or crit hit damage. Or if you want to sacrifice the crit hit chance uh, and keep skill haste on there, that is very much viable as well. It just depends on your player preference and what you would like to do. Uh, moving on to the holster, um, Colonel Bliss's holster. Uh, if no one knows what the talent for that is, hitting a target consecutively with a sidearm increases your damage with all weapons by 2% for 20 seconds. This effect stacks up to 10, so 10 times, so that's 20%, after which the stack is consumed and triggers an EMP effect, and I have 7% skill haste on it, and another 5.5% first aid self heal. Now, you can also substitute for such as Nimble, but as you can see, the stats all the way across there are completely horrible. But if that's what you choose to do instead of running the Colonel Bliss's holster and you have good main stats across the board as far as firearms, stamina, electronics on a nimble holster, then you can nimble your way to make yourself even more uh, survival, survivability in whatever build you choose. So the sky is the limit with this build. Whether you want to mix and match, if you want to run, one, want to run rejuvenated, you want to run reckless or vigorous or uh, Barrett's chess piece, the sky is the absolute limit with this. But by far the best in slot for knee pads on an all high end or named gear would be those short bows, those infamous short bows, get those. And personally you can run the Pharaoh's Mask um, if you're especially running the DZ or in Last Stand. Instead of the Tenacious Mask you can uh, equip the Pharaoh's Mask. That is also very viable. I do not have a Pharaoh's Mask, but even if I did, I believe I would still run the Tenacious just for the simple fact of using it as an offensive weapon 
so I can get that damage in, uh, increase of 10% for 10 seconds when I do pop a med kit, and that's great. Now I'm going to uh, shift you over to what the stats would look like in the last stand. So as you can see, whether you're uh, doing last stand or PBEing in the light zone or the dark zone, this is what makes this build so versatile and in my opinion the ultimate best build that there is in the division sure you can get you know proc striker and you know if you're actually face taking people but anybody that knows how to pvp they're not just going to stand there and stand still and let you shoot them um so to get all those stacks into place from striker is more situational and depending on your aim so uh that's why in my opinion i believe this type of build if you want to go all out DPS and drop your skill power by 50k and completely rely on your team as far as for your heals and overkill, then therefore you're going to be putting out more damage with this build than you would be uh, a striker build because striker is dependent on the stacks and can hit, it, hit consecutive shots uh, to build those stacks up. But like I said, not too many people that our good PVPers are just going to stand there and let you shoot them consistently without missing. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out the links in the description below to Revolution Gaming. Uh, awesome gaming community. Come check them out. Join a uh, great group of guys and women there to help you out in all your gaming needs. And we're having tons of giveaways going on. Uh, we also, uh, the very first link is in the description below is a link to our giveaway of a Cinch Gaming Control you, a Troller, a value of $180. Uh, please go check that out, and if you want to enter to win, please do so. Uh, all you need to do is like the video, comment what platform or choice on the video, and if you're not already a sub, sub to the channel, and all three of those things are absolutely free. It's free to enter in, it's free to win good stuff, and it's always great to win good stuff. But this is my build. Let me know in the comments of what you think. And also when it comes to the future of this channel and not basing it purely on division, what games do you want to see uh, me doing content on, whether it be gameplay, walkthroughs, whatever the case may be. Let me know that about that in the description below. And as always, I'm your boy, Brent Lillis, and we'll see you guys fudging later.